I want to preface this video that all of this is coming from alleged leakers and insiders, but it is worth mentioning that these guys tend to get a lot of things right, and it would be remiss of me not to talk about it. Now, the news today is that Verdansk is returning to Call of Duty Warzone, but there's a very large catch as to how that's going to happen, and I honestly think it's actually a bad decision. Now, this comes from Bob Network as well as Insider Gaming that have allegedly confirmed these reports that Call of Duty has pivoted away from releasing an annual map at the end of this year for Warzone alongside Black Ops 6 to skipping it entirely and using Verdansk in March of 2025. This is allegedly in spite of the fact that the annual release map intended for 2024 codenamed Avalon was actually ready for release at the end of this year, and they actually won't be releasing this complete map until fall of 2025 later on next year. So they are skipping a completed map that is ready to go with the integration of Black Ops 6 in order to focus on the return of Verdansk in March. And also, allegedly, there will be another rebirth style project that will release sometime during the life cycle of Black Ops 6 too. Allegedly, this pivot has occurred because Call of Duty saw the success that Fortnite had with bringing back its original content, which led to its largest player base count in recent history. And they're hoping to replicate the same effect in Verdansk in early 2025. Now, this sounds cool in principle, no one's going to complain about having Verdansk back at all, and if they do remaster it properly and actually add some things to it, it could be a good experience. But if I'm honest, this decision by Call of Duty, I actually think is going to massively backfire for the overall franchise and also for Warzone. The first major impact is obviously Black Ops 6. Call of Duty Black Ops 6 looks to be really promising, but I think a lot of fans are going to be greatly disappointed that there will be no real Warzone integration with Black Ops 6, and we don't know what the time frame for that might even look like now. Even if they do decide to bring across the weapons and the mechanics like Omni Movement, none of that's really going to feel like it makes a lot of sense if we're still playing Urzikstan all the way until March 2025. In this case, it's going to feel less like an integration and more like a bit of a mess, really. We're going to be taking an old version of Warzone, slapping Black Ops 6 to the side of it, and hoping for the best. The great thing about having an annual map release like Urzikstan with Modern Warfare 3 is that it builds a huge progression of content to look forward to over the release of the new title. Black Ops 6 with a new Warzone map, zombies, and all of the content that Black Ops 6 has to offer sounds like a fantastic release. But Black Ops 6 with Warzone pretty much entirely absent until early 2025 doesn't sound really all that great. So this seems like huge collateral damage towards Call of Duty's own annual release, and I'm not really sure why they're doing it. And the flip side of this is that they have spent pretty much most of this year ignoring Urzikstan. Season 4 is the first time we've had meaningful updates to Urzikstan in terms of the player count increasing to 120, in terms of pop-off power getting redesigned, but even then, there hasn't been enough. We've had a few bunkers added to the map, we've had one POI redesigned, and in the space of a year, Urzikstan has been basically left alone with zero attention paid to it, which we're now going to be relying on all the way until potentially March 2025, or possibly even later if there are any delays, which is obscene to me, especially considering Avalon is allegedly ready to go at the end of this year. I also think they're building a lot of fatigue in Call of Duty at this moment in time. As great as it has been to have Fortune's Keep return and Rebirth Island for those people who enjoy that content, it means that we won't have brand new content, and I mean in terms of a new map or new piece of content, generally speaking, until the end of 2025. There would have been no new maps that were entirely new all the way until the end of 2020, two years after the release of Urzikstan, which is pretty insane in my view. The player base felt a lot of fatigue after the release of Fortune's Keep and Rebirth Island. Although they are decent pieces of content to have, they aren't new pieces of content, and ultimately it means that it's stuff you've already done before. Although Vidansk has been away for a very, very long time, it was also a map that was played for two years in a row, from Vidansk to Vidansk 84, and I really do feel as though they're vastly overestimating how much hype and anticipation is actually going to be overridden by player base fatigue of playing the same old content for effectively four to five years. 
For whatever reason, Call of Duty seems to treat the changes that they've made in the second or third iteration of Warzone as if Warzone is just individual products, Warzone 1, Warzone 2, and Warzone 3. Warzone is just Warzone, and as far as most players are concerned, this entire year of 2024 has been entirely dependent on them bringing back content that we already had. In the eyes of the average player, Fortunes Keep, Rebirth Island, Specialist Tokens, and all of the things that have returned to Warzone were just things that shouldn't have been gotten rid of in the first place, and the same will apply to Vidansk. The third big thing for me, and this is something that I feel is worth mentioning, is that if they've had to pivot to a new map to produce this new piece of content, which is ultimately a remake or Vedansk returning, which requires a lot of development time, that is going to have a huge impact on the rest of the development of Warzone. We're talking less quality of life, less content whilst they're focusing on getting this out. And it seems to me that that is the case, because so far... Modern Warfare Zombies has vanished for the most part. We've seen Season 4 be extremely light on content as well as quality of life improvements. And honestly, if this is the case and that they've had one big map finished and ready for the end of this year and they've been told to produce another by March, I don't see any scenario where Vedansk releases in March of 2025 without being infested by bugs, crashing, issues that are going to be absolutely nightmarish for Call of Duty to handle. And I guess the final nail in the coffin, you will, of this potential reality that we could be facing with Warzone is that any new content that comes to Warzone in 2025, which could be the new Avalon map, which was likely designed with all of Black Ops 6's movement systems in mind, is going to be thrown under the bus by major releases like Grand Theft Auto 6 and also the impending release of a competitive Battlefield game, which allegedly also has a Battle Royale, so it means that Call of Duty is holding possibly one of its most interesting cards to a year where it's going to get the least amount of attention. And I think the confusing thing about all of this is that if Avalon is ready to go, this map has been designed with Black Ops 6 in mind, all of the weapons in mind, all of the new movement systems and mechanics that are coming to the game in mind, whereas Verdansk absolutely hasn't been designed with Omni Movement in mind in any way, shape or form, even though Omni Movement is confirmed to be coming to Warzone. I really do feel like if this alleged leak or rumor is true, that this could be one of the largest swings and misses that Warzone ever makes. Releasing Vidansk in early 2025 means that we're missing an annual release map which is going to cause huge player fatigue up until that point. It means that Warzone is going to be on the back burner until March 2025 because nobody will want to play a version of Warzone that isn't like Black Ops 6 and even if they do transition the movement and all of the new content over, not playing on a new map is going to be bitterly disappointing for the vast majority of players. I honestly just feel as though potentially relying on this nostalgic product and possibly even rushing out Vedansk, which may take away from other development time, which may cause less content, less quality of life improvements for Warzone, and probably some developer crunch as well, is going to take the game backwards, not forwards. Call of Duty can't spend all of 2024 and all of 2025 relying on old content to bring people back to the game. Black Ops 6 looked like a fresh new experience, and if it had a new Warzone map, it would have been a brand spanking new Warzone experience that people would have returned for. And had they decided to release Verdansk in mid-2025, maybe before GTA 6, they would have had a perfect experience of people enjoying something fresh and something new with Black Ops after two to three years of playing Modern Warfare games, and then also bringing back something people love. It just feels like this could be a, a huge, huge error for Call of Duty this year, and I really do hope that it isn't the case. I honestly do believe that if Call of Duty goes forward without a big map release at the end of 2024, it could possibly be one of the worst decisions the franchise makes, and could potentially put a nail in the coffin for Warzone until 2025. I genuinely don't think people are going to carry on playing Warzone whilst a new release of Call of Duty is out. The genius of Call of Duty of the past is that you effectively had a brand new release that you enjoyed playing for however many months, and if you were a Warzone player as well, you ended up using that premium release as a drive towards the new Warzone content that released later that year. Now, what's going to happen this time is that you're going to play Black Ops 6, and then you're going to not want to play Warzone because Warzone feels stale, because even if it has the movement, the guns, and the mechanics, it's going to be on an old map. 
So for the first time in pretty much ever, Call of Duty could potentially be competing against itself and cannibalizing its own product rather than having an experience that adds to the other. I'm really interested to see your thoughts and feelings about this in the comment section below. I think this could be a critical mistake, but I'm down to see what you guys think. Let me know your thoughts down below and I'll chat to you in the next one.